I just want to say thanks to all you guys who are tuning in, whether you're watching live, whether you're watching the VOD later, or whether you're streaming this from your favorite podcast streaming platform. Thanks for tuning in to the Fish On podcast. Uh, we're going to talk about some new Ontario bait fish regulations, uh, early ice, and we'll just get into our usual banter, I guess, talk about fishing. But uh, we're going to skip the introductions. I've got Ben and Adam here with me, and of course, I'm Jeff. And uh, yeah, hey, let's, we'll get hey, right hey, in. Ben. We'll get right into it <clears throat> because we've wasted enough time with all these stupid technical difficulties, I think. Um, yeah, so there's been some big, big changes made. Uh, to the Ontario bait fish regulations. Do one of you guys want to want to kick off, kick it off, or do you want me to start her? Well, maybe you should just uh, talk generally about what the changes are, and then maybe we can go into some of the specifics. Hey, Tunis yeah, is in here. Hey, Tunis. Bonjour, Tunis. I don't speak uh, French, but bonjour. I can say Hello. bonjour, bonjour. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So. The biggest change that they've made to the bait fish regulations uh, starting in January 1st, 2022, is that you can no longer take bait fish across what they've implemented in called bait fish management zones. So Ontario is divided up into 20 different fishing management zones or FMZs. And now they've divided Ontario up into four bait fish management zones that are separate from the FMZs. And you can only use bait fish harvested or purchased in one BMZ, you cannot take that bait fish across like a BMZ border into another bait fish management zone. So that's like uh, the Coles notes, but there's a, there's a couple of intricacies that go along with that as well. Um, this, there's, there's the confusion is like, uh, what happens if I harvest my own bait? How long can I keep my bait? When do I have to show receipts and all that stuff? And we're going to get into that. So you look like you had something to add there, Adam. Oh, I've got all kinds of stuff I could just rant about. But um, I was going to bring up the fact. So we've talked about this a few times. And you had brought up the fact that you have a bunch of salted minnows from last season that you can't use now. Well, could you use? No, you can't keep them. They have, could you use them in your bait management zone? Yes. Well, <clears throat> I guess I thought you have to discard them after two techni weeks. Technically, I'm going to have to throw them out because I don't have a receipt proving that I bought them. Well, you in should my, eat them in my my salted minnows. It's like sardines, basically. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> That's gross. Sure, just throw some throw it with some fries. It'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> Vinegar. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. So yeah, so according to the to the regulations, I. Right now, I'll have to throw them out because I don't have the receipt that proves that I bought those minnows, um, which is unfortunate because they've lasted me a long time. I, I don't have to throw them out yet. I have to throw them out on the last day of December. I can no longer use those salted minnows as of January 1st. So hopefully we'll get some ice down here near Kingston so I can use them up, I guess. And then have a sleigh fest where you yeah. can go through them all. That would be Hopefully great. that would be like the ideal scenario. Christmas but, uh, sleigh fest. I don't know if it's going to work out like that for me. <laughs> the the weather the weather is only just going to start getting cold in the next couple of days. We're going to have some ice making weather, but it's just not going to be cold enough to make like really good ice near Kingston. No, I don't so, think so. It is what it is, man. No. That's just the way it goes. Going to have to go north. Yeah, I think we had ice this time last year. Yeah. So further to Adam's point, what he's talking about is. When you are using live bait fish, whether it's leeches, and this is not just for ice fishing either. This is now a regulation that's going to happen. That's going to be in effect all throughout the year, through the open water season, through the ice fishing season, all year round. So when you are purchasing bait fish in one BMZ, you have to keep that receipt and you have two weeks to use that as long as you're outside of your home bait management zone. So if, for example, we live in... What do, what do we live in, Ben? It's called the South Southeastern Southern no Southern Ontario BMZ because that's a pretty right. it's a pretty big one. So I live in the Southern BMZ, so I can buy those minnows from wherever or catch them, you know, harvest them myself. I can sell them, and I believe I can keep them for as long as I want because they were harvested or bought in my home BMZ. If I were to go into a different bait management zone, for example, Central Ontario BMZ. I have to, I can't take any of my minnows with me. I can't take any live bait with me. 
I can go to the Central Ontario BMZ. I can buy my minnows there. I have to keep that receipt. You have to keep your receipt. So when you're buying minnows in a bait management zone that's outside of your home BMZ, make sure you keep that receipt because you have two weeks to use those minnows or whatever your live, live bait is. And if a conservation officer approaches you and say, hey, where'd you get those minnows? Show me the receipt. And you show them that receipt, you're good to go. If you keep them for two weeks past the date that you bought them, then you're in trouble. You have two weeks to use your bait. And that, I mean, that kind of sucks, especially for people who like buy their minnows and keep them alive for so long, right? Well, I mean, it's it only going to apply, it, it, it will only apply to people that are traveling though, right? So if you're traveling out of your bait management zone for more than two weeks, then yeah, you better start buying more than one load of minnows. Yeah, um, but if you, if you do day trips, you have, you can buy them, <clears throat> pardon me, you can buy those. So for example, say I were to go up to like Petawawa or something like that, Petawawa falls into the central bait management zone, I think. No, I won't use pet because I'm not sure. So let's say I go up to uh, go late, uh, ice fishing on Nipissing, right? If I were to go ice fishing on Nipissing, I go there, buy my minnows, say I'm only there for two days. I can't bring those minnows back home with me and then bring right. them back. If I, if I take them across the bait management zone between the central Ontario BMZ and the southern Ontario BMZ, then I'm in trouble. And then... Um but I, and you right. can't you can't take them across and then bring them back and only use them in that BMZ either. Like it's it is illegal to just bring them across that BMZ border. Right. Not not just to use them in that BMZ, but to actually transport yeah. them. It's like bringing fugitives or yeah. harboring criminals or something. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I just want to make a correction. There, it looks like there's technically almost six bait uh, management zones because well, you have the well, Great Lakes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. They're they're considered a separate one, and then you got South Central northeast and northwest yeah but then there's a whole section of northern ontario where no bait fish are actually permitted at all yeah so i guess technically it's six but yeah and it, it's confusing again too because the great lakes are like you said that's a good point and i didn't think about that um, because the great lakes are technically like their own bait management zone there are some intricacies around the bmz's that are adjacent to the great lake bmz's and uh, you can take bait fish from an adjacent BMZ and use it in a Great Lake. Uh, wow. Yeah. It's, okay. And the reason is because so the, the whole point of the BMZs is to prevent um, invasive species and like, you know, uh, transmissible diseases to fish like uh, VHS, viral hemorrhagic septicitis or whatever it stands for or something like that. But if you think about the way that all the tributaries and all the inland lakes flow that are near Great Lakes, how they all flow into the Great Lakes anyways. So if yeah. there's if there's a disease prevalent in a back lake that's near or like north of a Great Lake, there's a pretty good chance that that disease is going to be found in the Great Lake anyways, just because of the way that the water flows into them, right? They're, they're, they all sort of somehow are tributaries into the Great Lakes somehow or another, whether it's just a little stream or a little creek or whatever. It's magic. Yeah. Right. Uh, considering that theory, though, if you take a look at the map, it wouldn't quite work for uh, like FMZ uh, three. FMZ three is part of the northeastern bait management zone, and if you were to take stuff from all the way down there into Lake Superior, that seems like quite a travel. But technically, an adjacent BMZ, so that should be allowed. But see, that's quite the distance tr to to travel. For that bait yep well, it is does it ha i don't i don't know if it has much to do with distance as it does with like the zone yeah right it's, I mean, it's just about the bait management zone because you guys right. said you're in yeah, yeah. in southern in southern ontario bait management zone and yeah, so am i so i mean we could we could use bait like between us yeah and so yes we could but that's another thing now for for people like you like specifically because you live around the what you live in you live on a border of bmz's so you, yeah, li you live FMZs. pretty much yeah so adam pretty much lives on the border between the southern ontario bmz and the central ontario bmz so that kind of that sucks because you need to be you know like yeah so there's there's a, <laughs> a bait shop about like six minutes north of me i can't buy minnows there and then fish 
south of the town I'm in, and vice versa. I can't buy minnows in town and drive six minutes north of me. You're gonna have I, to I, have like two different bait buckets <laughs> and like have them color coordinated. North and south. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> But that's the thing. So if, if I if I drive six minutes up the road north, buy minnows, I can't take them home because then I'm in another BMZ. That's right. Um, so I, I, I will have to be careful uh, just because it's, it's I'm right on this border here. But it's, uh, it's tricky, man. And they, yeah. like they have not made it like super, super easy to understand either. So like this. They're not doing us any favors. It's pretty complicated. If you really, have, you really have to dive into it to get a grasp of it. That yeah, sucks. we've we've been talking about it for a while, and we've talked to some other people about it to try and understand it. it. Yeah, and uh, and even still, it's it's not. Uh, <laughs> um, it's not. There's there's more to learn. Yeah, um, for sure. But. Uh, I'm going to have to, uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's a good excuse for us all to spend more time paying attention to the regulations anyways. Absolutely. Usually for me, unless I'm fishing in a, in a place that I'm familiar with and I know what the regulations are, I almost always am checking the regulations wherever I'm going because sometimes there's even like lake specific regulations. Um, yeah. so I usually have a look and I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent on, on the seasons in all the zones. So you know, I, again, not only do I live between two BMZs, but I also live between two FMZs. Um, so the regulations north of me are different than they are south of me. Yeah. Um, this you would is think be that I would, because I, uh, I don't. Uh, I don't remember the last time I went into a bait shop and bought bait and got a receipt. Do you guys remember the last time you got a receipt for the bait you bought? Yeah. There's so many shops you go in there, and I just hand them a couple bills, and they're like, "Here's." two dozen which is actually like 36 but i have a feeling like some of the shops that i'm going into are gonna have to like hand write me my receipt and then right. the officers will be like what is this there's yeah i'm looking at the list of information that's required on their date of purchase yeah business name if applicable commercial license number location of purchase and quantity of bait so they're gonna have to take their time to really write out a bunch of stuff yeah and it's gonna be chicken scratch too that's uh yeah <laughs> there sure is yeah it's, the the uh, officer is going to be like, uh, "Did you did you make this, sir? Did you just draw this up on your uh, McDonald's handkerchief here?" No, or, officer. Look in? how neat my handwriting is. You just have it like handwritten on the palm of your hand, like there it is. <laughs> 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 the guy didn't have paper. This is all we had. I think uh, uh, I think that these regulations are going to encourage a lot more people to start trying to trap their own bait fish in their home Z- BMZ because you can't. Yes, I think that's. You can't. Yes, you cannot a, trap. We haven't mentioned that. Yeah. We so you, you that cannot yet. trap bait fish outside of your home BMZ. So, for example, I'll use myself again. I live in Kingston, so in the southern BMZ, I can trap bait fish anywhere around me, like uh, you know, in this BMZ. But I can't go into the central or the northeast or northwest BMZs and trap bait fish there. I mean, <laughs> it's. It, it, what it's, it's not going to be. How are it's they not going to be that easy to get around either, right? Because if you have bait fish, so for example, say I was going to do some shady stuff and I'm going to go up to Nipissing, trap some bait fish in a creek up there and then go on to Lake Nipissing and, and use live bait and, and cat, try and catch walleyes. Conservation officer approaches me and says, hey, where'd you get that bait? I'd be like, oh, I, I, I harvested it myself here. He's like, oh, cool. So you live in this BMZ then? And then I'm going to be like, oh, drat. Yeah, no, I just got to no, my, my ID in Ooh. my truck. I'll be right back. Because you have, you're have, you going to have to show them like some kind of ID that shows your address. And whatever the address on your government-issued ID is, that's what they're going to use as your BMZ. So if I'm going to give him my driver's license, it's going to say I live in Kingston. He's going to immediately know that if I trapped bait fish there, that's illegal. And then if I try to tell him that I bought it, well, I don't have a receipt, so that's illegal. So, I mean... But what I don't understand is how are they going to determine whether or not let's say you're in your home BMZ yeah. and you bought some bait fish and you don't have the receipt for it. What's to stop you saying, I mean, I'm not trying to encourage this, of course, but I mean, what's to stop you from saying like, oh, I caught these bait fish. It's not like the bait fish have like tags on them and registered numbers that like, oh, they came from a, from a farmed bait tank. Like there's it's, no such thing. Right. So, so that's true. I was, I was going to be a hard one to enforce. 
I was chatting with um, Brody from NWO Outdoors about this. He is like a, a regulations encyclopedia. I normally he's he's my go-to guy, and I know he he's got like contacts there that he can just like call if he has questions. So cool. I talked to him about this for a while, and he had he suggested that, and I I think we confirmed this, but um, he suggested that if you are in your own BMZ, no receipt is required. I think that's correct. Well, okay. so that's interesting. So I I think that's true. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I, if I, like we were talking about this, I I, I swear this was yeah. What we, I missed when we talked we about that to. the other night. I missed that part where if you're fishing in your home BMZ, you don't have a. To I'm show pretty sure a receipt. that's the case. You don't but, have to show a receipt if you're in your own BMZ. Honestly, it would make sense because otherwise, how are they going to prove that you that you bought them or you, that you harvested them yourself? Like right. it, that's the only way around it. And it is some, there is some part of it that is, you know, an honor system because you could buy those minnows anywhere and then just take them home. I don't have a receipt. I, I harvested them. You know what I mean? Like you could do that, but, um, <laughs> what? Yes. So it, does, it actually says this. It does specify. Oh, did I miss something? No, there's I'm a funny look, comment in the chat the and I'm not, I'm not oh. really sure what to make of it. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell if we're being trolled or not. <laughs> They're Russian troll farms. It's a bot. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, man. That was funny. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so yes, I just I, I can confirm that. I just read here, anglers fishing outside of their home BMZ must prove a receipt. So if you're... Okay. Yeah. So it says that right in the regs. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. What's up, who's Duncan? You don't know anything about ice fishing? That's cool, man. It uh, it can be cold. Thanks for tuning in. It can be cold. It can't be warm though. Cannot ever I mean, be warm. Yeah, well, that's, no, that's a lie. That's that's, that's <laughs> a lie. lie. Yeah, yeah, when you're when you're in those little like uh, what is it like six by six huts and you got those heaters like cooking, it, it oh, gets yeah. warm in there. You're taking yeah. off layers. You're sweating. It it becomes a sauna. Yeah. If you're, yeah. And I was on Simcoe last year. And it was a gorgeous day, like so nice. No gloves, just a hoodie. Like it was beautiful. And it was like, when was that? I feel like it was February. I want to say it was just like a perfect day, sunny. I Not, love those days on the ice. Yeah, yeah. There, there are some sunglasses outfit, though. <laughs> there are some outfitters out there on some of the bigger, like uh, more destination lakes that have these ice palaces that they'll drag out onto the lake. It's basically a trailer that has like flat screen TVs in it. They got propane heaters, like it's wild. So bunk you can- Bunk beds too. Bunk like, beds, you can you can yeah. sleep like, you know, six or seven people in some of them. You can you can make ice fishing pretty cozy. Pretty cozy. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. But it gets expensive real quick. It's, well, it's, <laughs> any kind of fishing does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, banana buoy confirms he's not a bot. So okay. that's awesome. Good to know. <laughs> welcome, Banana Buoy. Welcome to the live stream. Uh, yeah, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining in. This yes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, um, was there anything else with the BMCs we wanted to uh, to cover? Um, I don't know. So, oh, um, yeah. No, I think we talked about the fact that it's also illegal to trap minnows and or bait in another BMZ. You can't do that. I think yeah. you said that, Jeff. I did. Yeah, you can't do that. That's bad news. You're in big trouble. Yeah. Yeah, according to so, the news and updates here, I think we hit the main bullet points of. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think I would like just to like cap that off. I would just suggest that uh, everyone go out and well, not go out, go online, read the regulations, get a good understanding. Uh, don't take our word for it because we're learning about this too. So that's absolutely true. And more importantly, yeah. don't go out anywhere. COVID is crazy right now. <laughs> Just stay at home and read the reg. No, I'm just kidding. Don't don't do that. But you know, just drive home the fear, Jeff. Just just, just be in. careful. Just be careful. You wash your hands. You'll be all right. Don't don't <laughs> fact, not go, go fishing. fishing. And just stay away from everybody. Yeah, I mean that's honestly it is the it is the safest thing you can do in the middle of a pandemic, and that is to go out and stand on a frozen lake by yourself, catch some fish. <laughs> no Omnicron out there. Nope. The, the it's, fish, it's the fish don't have COVID. It's Omicron, not Omnicron. We're saying all the hot guys. Thanks. This 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 podcast is going to be taken down. Oh, it's going to be YouTube. We're yeah. not getting we're not getting paid, boys. We're not getting paid. 
we don't, we're getting paid before? We don't get paid. Yeah, we were going to. We were going to make thousands. What? We were going to, oh, we, no we might have, we might have made tens of dollars. Tens of yeah. dollars. <laughs> tens well, that would have, of billions. That would help. I'd get a meal this week. Not anymore, That's though. That's true. I got something you can come eat, Ben. <laughs> Live stream. Is it Adam. mac and cheese? <laughs> that's a knuckle sandwich. Oh, and I got some minnows in the freezer from last you want year. Some of this? this is this is a PG podcast, okay, boys? Let's try and keep it that way. Uh, do my best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm looking yeah. around me at all the things that are not PG. They're just behind the camera. No one can see them. So, <laughs> so I don't know about you guys. The weather sucks. Yeah, well, it really does. I just got an order of, oh. of frostbite baits that I'm so pumped to use, and now I just gotta wait, probably until like after the new year, right? Everyone start chucking bills. I like this guy, Tunis. Yeah, I like Tunis. He, he's legit. He's not a bot. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Tunis is a good dude, and he makes some really great videos. Actually, um, he does something very similar to Ben and I: fishing, camping, portaging, paddling. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Um, and super wicked uh, yeah, video videos. editing. So, yeah. Well, wow. yeah, him and, him and his wife do some pretty awesome that's adventures. They just, they just did a, a really awesome one actually on the French River. And Tunis, I apologize. I still have not caught up on that. I, I'm doing my best. <laughs> but well, I want to. I, I watched the first two and they were really great. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to go check, check out Tunis out. later. Yeah, why don't you we uh, link his too. thing in the chat? Let's link his channel. Can we? For sure. Can um, one of you guys do that? I'll do that. Yeah. I'll do it. So Banana Boo is curious about how the weather affects ice fishing. Well, um, if it's not cold think, enough to know. make ice, then you can't stand on a be, frozen lake. I knew you were going to be smart about it. <laughs> so, but to like add some valuable information there, a few things that really ruin ice would be wind and uh, excessive days of sun. <laughs> also rain and, and, oh, to be, yeah. and believe it or not, snow actually is really bad for good ice. Uh, because snow will insulate the ice from the cold and will prevent it from getting thicker. So that's really bad. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't had much of anything but rain and warm weather, so we haven't even had the cold yeah. weather to produce any ice for the snow to land on. If we're, if we're lucky, we'll get a really good cold snap, and when you get a good cold snap, you generally get uh, better ice. It's like It's thicker, it's more quality ice, because you don't get air bubbles trapped in there, um, yeah, the faster it freezes, the better, for sure. Now, to be fair, last Friday, I did go ice fishing very close to home, but I would not have recommended anyone else heading out on that ice because I might have had 100 meters of ice before the lake was open water again, and it was it was pretty sketchy ice. I wasn't very far from shore, and I wasn't any deeper than, like, five feet, so if something weird happens and I fell through the ice, I'd still be standing up on the bottom, so... And I That's did, good. I took all my safety precautions. I, I sputted my way out. I made sure I wasn't going to go through, but it was, it was sketchy ice and I didn't catch anything, but that's okay. Cause I still um, can say I went ice fishing last Friday. Banana, <laughs> Banana Bowie asked a great question here. Uh, asking if fish care about the weather above the ice, like what it's like above the water, above the ice. Does, does air pressure still affect the fish? And to our knowledge, yeah, air, air pressure still does affect the fish. Um, and ice on the water can also affect the fish because it starts to deplete the oxygen levels in the water. And, uh, yeah, you don't get, you don't get all the, uh, turbulence that normally like will add oxygen and all the plants are dead. Like they add oxygen. Um, yeah. so yeah. So, and fish do need oxygen to survive, of course. Uh, so as the weather, as the winter goes on and there's ice on the lakes for longer, they tend to slow down the fish. They're not as active. So the beginning there, of ice season is usually the best. There are some schools of thought about how barometric pressure affects fish as well. Um, mm -hmm. when, the, when the barometric pressure is higher, it creates more pressure on the fish's swim bladder, which makes them a little bit more comfortable, makes them a little bit more active. When the barometric pressure is lower, then there's lower pressure on their swim bladder, which makes it expand. And that makes... The, the train of thought is that when it, when it's that like that, that it makes the fish uncomfortable and they have to swim deeper in order to get the water pressure to keep um, the weight of the lake above them and the water pressure deeper in the water column uh, puts the, the addi additional pressure that they need on their swim bladder to keep them comfortable. So usually if the barometric pressure is high, you find them in the shallows. 
If it's low, you find them deep. That's that's the train of thought. There's some people that say that's not true. There are some people that say it is true. I don't know whether it's true or not, but it makes sense to me. Um, it sounds it sounds pretty sciencey, and I'm I'm a, I believe in science. So, well, I don't. Yeah, I believe in the flying spaghetti monster. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, have you guys uh, brought in any, brought out any of your ice fishing gear yet? Like, have you taken anything out? Have you oh, yeah. prepped anything? Yeah. Ben, you said you got a bunch of frostbite baits. What did you get? Uh, I got a lot. Jeff showing off his Garmin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, this thing's wicked. I love it. Just in case you're wondering, I'm not sponsored by Garmin. However, this is the Garmin Echo Map uh, UHD 75 SV, and it is balling with the small ice kit. Just saying. Yeah, it's pretty sweet having that dual screen. I've but if you for some before, reason maybe. somebody from Garmin ends up watching this live stream and wants to chat, I will make myself available at any time. <laughs> so yeah, I've been getting ready for the ice fishing season. Uh, I got a new sled, which was big. Nice. Like I mean, it's it's actually big too. It's like bigger than my last sled. Um, my last sled was like one of those dinky like forty five inch sleds, and I upgraded to a sixty. Um, so I've changed my ice fishing crate. I've done some mods to that. I've done some mods to the sled. I've added a like a downhill rope on the back. Um, oh, that's so smart. The rope, the rope is not long enough to walk it down, right? Yeah. So I've got a rope on the back. I, I've got a video in the makes. I'll be sharing that. Don't worry. Um, so I, yeah. have, I have the same sled. I'll tell you what I did with mine because for some reason on the Pelican Trek 60s, the rope that they give you is like super, super short. So yeah. I ended up, I ended up untying it from one end. And then I had some like uh, orange and green paracord and I ended up making like this extra piece, like really long piece of rope. I used it. I used three th uh, strands of it and I basically braided them together and then just like extended the length of that rope. And it makes it a lot easier to drag around, but putting a, putting a, a rope strap or whatever you said on the back so that you can hold it when you're going downhill, man, that's such a good idea. I never, ever thought of that. And there's a couple of places, you know, the one I'm talking about when you're going down that ramp to, to get onto that lake, that, oh, it, that yeah. would be very handy to have. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, are, be... you guys are doing it all wrong. You're supposed to ride the sled downhills. Ah, of course. Pull it. Come on guys. Man. Jeez. Idiot. <laughs> what do we use uh, for Tunis shelters? Had another question. Yeah, he uh, yeah. he's asking what we use for shelters. Um, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I have this really really garbage like uh, oh, and I'm gonna get in trouble here. A uh, Rapala uh, shelter. Uh, <laughs> it's a Rapala shelter. Uh, Rapala? I think it's called a Sherpa. A Sherpa two. It's a two man, um, and it's pretty beat up. But it does the trick, and uh, it's still, I mean, it's in one piece. It just doesn't look all that great. But last year, like, you and I fished, was it last year? I don't know. I didn't use that shelter once last year. I was out on, on the ice. I wasn't out on the ice much because I was moving last year during the winter. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. But uh, We didn't get out until late February, you and yeah, I. Yeah. But it, I, I, I want to say even, like, the year before that, I didn't use my shelter much at all. I've been doing a lot more like run and gun kind of fishing, just popping holes and, and moving. Um, yeah, same here, but it's only because I can't afford another option at this point. <laughs> I have a, uh, I have a Fraybill HQ 100, which is not a, it's a pretty much, pretty much the bottom of the line for Fraybill huts, but it, it works well. I mean, it's non insulated, so it still gets pretty cold. I only have a small body heater, so but that really it does help even in in a small tent like that. Um, it does the job, man. It, it works great. It it does what it's supposed to do. It pops up easy. It keeps me out of the elements when it's snowing or if it's super windy. the The anchor straps work really well on it, but it's a bit small for what I want. But uh, yeah, it keeps you out of the wind for sure. Um, it does the job. I don't know if for I'll sure. upgrade this year. Probably so I remember uh, Benny had one of those, and we were, when we were yeah. fishing together a lot, yeah. and we went out on a day when it was minus twenty five. It was minus thirty with the wind chill, and we went out onto the Bay of Quinney, and uh, we had two buddy heaters with us, and they could not keep up with that minus yeah. thirty wind. It, just it doesn't hold right the heat. The but I'll tell no. you what I did get for it. So I bought 
I bought a little fan. It's called the base camp fan and you can hang it from the ceiling of your hub and it blows, it blows downwards. And I found that that actually made a really big difference because obviously, as that. we all know, heat rises. So if you put yeah. a fan at the top that blows the air down, the heat is going to rise and then the fan is going to blow that warm air back down onto you. So I found that actually made a really big difference in keeping the heat in my tent. But like I said, it's a non-insulated tent. So, I mean, there's lots of other places for the heat to escape out of that tent, unfortunately. For an inexpensive tent, it does the job. And it's if you're sure. just getting into ice fishing and, uh, you know, you're trying to do it on the cheap, you can't go wrong with really any tent that just gets you out of the wind and snow and keeps you comfy. Yeah, I would be thankful for just about anything some, yeah. some days when I'm out there. I, I really do love not having a tent and not having to set it up or take it down and I can just move as much as I want. I really do value that a lot. And that I don't have to drag it behind me either. But then there's some days where it's just, you know, I can only do three, four hours standing on that ice without a shelter um, before well, that's I'm the just other thing. pack it in. That's the other thing about the, the HQ100. It is super light, like ultra, ultra light. I think it weighs like 18 pounds, which is nothing. That's pretty good. Yeah. 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 And it comes with an oversized carry bag. So like when you're done, you can cinch it up with the strap and it goes right back in the bag. It's... It's really well made. It's just not the warmest tent and or biggest, but it does the job. One you uh, at upgrading, eh? I was, but I think that that's going to wait until next year now. You're going to freeze your butt off for another year. I can handle it. <laughs> um, ben and I were camping one year, and we had, we had big plans to do some ice fishing, and we were going to sleep at, in a, on a campsite just at the side of the lake and there's a video of it we ended up we got to the lake and it was just slush it was like a foot to two feet of slush on top of the ice like we couldn't walk through it it was so miserable so we ended up sleeping at the boat ramp which is a funny story on its own but i ended up using my ice fishing hut as like uh, a shed we kept all of our gear in it we kept the heaters on so we could like dry out our clothes we and, used it as a changing uh, room too. That was yeah, beautiful. yeah, we had a change room. So nice <laughs> it was to almost have like a little sauna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. But we it was snowing a lot. So it was nice to keep all that stuff out of the snow, like yeah. keep all the snow off of it. Because it was like that really thick, powdery, like heavy snow. Um, which was great because in the morning when we woke up, the trees, like everything was so oh. incredible. It looked Yeah. Yeah, the internet's really long. crap. It's mm -hmm. really slowing down. Is that just me or is that Adam? It's just me? a video. It's just a video. Your, it your audio sounds fine. It's just the video is starting to get a bit yeah falling dropping. apart bad. Oh, there you go. Well, when uh, it's a small price to pay for moving out of the city, I'll take it. So uh, yeah, I would trade. It's not. I mean, it's literally just as expensive. It's just much slower. But yeah. If not more expensive not for rural internet. Yeah. R rural internet sucks. <laughs> Gotta get Can that Starlink, be. bro. Mm-hmm. Skynet? Starlink? Skynet. Yeah, Starlink. Skynet. Yeah. That's the Matrix, isn't it? No, it's Terminator. No, that's Terminator. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. That's right. One so of yes, those, what uh, what super cool, are you guys excited cool to fish romance. with? This well, that's what I was just going to get on to uh, about you, because I know you're itching to talk about it. You just got a bunch. I know you mentioned it earlier. Oh, the, yeah, what? the frostbite baits. Why don't you yeah, show us what you got? Lot. So, okay. <laughs> show and tell, show and tell. Show and tell. We'll start off with the panfish. Got a couple packages of spikes. You have to describe it for those who are listening. Yeah. So for those who are listening, I just got some tiny little spikes from frostbite. They're like maybe an inch and a half long, really small little things, perfect for crappie and perch. Um, and also maybe dead sticking Tony's, for some brook trout. Tony's in the house. Hey, Tony. What up, Tackle Box, Tony? And uh, so I, it was Black Friday, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to kind of go haywire here and uh, have a heyday and just uh, get $100 worth of baits and save on shipping. And so I got a lot of frostbite baits. So I tried to get all the different fish, right? So I got my crappie, panfish covered. Next was uh, like walleye and lakers. 
So I got some Dragon Slayers in white, and this nice blue color with the white belly on it. Mm. Nice. Looks so good, for sure. Hey, can we just give a shout out to uh, Dylan Martin, who said, I'm the GOAT. I, I can't support that comment, but I'll take I your disagree. word for it. <laughs> I'll give a shout out to Dylan, but I don't know if I can get behind that, Dylan. Yeah, no, hey, none Dylan. of us are going to get behind that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Are we planning to target Simcoe at all this year? I can tell you that I am at some point. I have uh, I have some family that lives up that way. So when we go, <laughs> if we're able to go visit them, um, I'm planning on bringing my ice fishing stuff and and doing some uh, doing some fishing out on Sim Simcoe for the first time. I've never been yeah, out there. Yeah, that's great. So. They're uh, they got Simcoe. they got bait management zones and they're gonna they're gonna create some new COVID management zones too, so you won't be able to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most likely. Put it yeah. into the fishing rigs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I want to go to Simcoe 2 for sure. So we should try and link up. Uh, I mean, it's not that far. That. We could just, we could do a day trip up there. Uh, it's like an hour, it's... like actually like 45 minutes from me. For for Ben and I, it's probably about three hours. Mm -hmm. To to probably like to mm -hmm. the southern end. If we were to go to the north end, probably closer to four. Uh, yeah, maybe I think more, maybe four to six. No, it's not six. No. South to north. No, like no. four for the... You don't think six? Okay. No, no. I've, I've driven okay. all around the north end to get to my family that lives up there. It took us, It took my wife and I about uh, just a little bit over four hours to go, like, from the 401 up the west side of the lake and then up around the north side and then back to the northwest side again. Sorry, the, we, we drove up the east side and then we went around the top over the bridge okay. where, like, Simcoe connects to another lake north of it. And then we came back down around to the northwest side. That we were just just a little bit over four hours from Kingston. Yes, Tunis, so. we're gonna make our way out to see you for sure. We yeah, man. I, I didn't. Tunis. I didn't do it last year, man. I I fished mostly through like close to home last year, but this year Ottawa's so close. Like the Ottawa Valley, so close. It's so. It's not. It's like a just a hop, skip, and a jump to get out there, right? A couple hours. Not for me. Yeah, but. So I'm going to keep going with my You're baits because I cut off. So. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get a goat hat. Sorry, <laughs> Ben. Go on. It's Go okay. on. It's silly. No, but you do need a goat hat now. Yeah. I think Dylan might have started something. <laughs> Thanks, Dylan. Yeah. And also, Tackle Box Tony, uh, for sure, it would be cool to get out and i don't think any of us have ever like targeted whitefish so you no. you really truly are the goat you're gonna have to show us the ways because we're all a bunch of noobs we don't know what we're doing we could probably catch some like sunfish or something if you want some sunfish we could help you with that yeah yeah probably i could probably catch yeah. some sand uh, or whatever's on the bottom of largies Simcoe. largies we could catch l no no, no. <laughs> i mean i don't know i don't know actually what fmz simcoe is and, but i would imagine that bass is closed during the winter time there yeah. as well yeah they have some pretty they have some pretty stringent uh restrictions on simcoe to like uh like slot sizes and stuff for walleye if i'm not mistaken i don't know them off the top of my head because i've never fished there so i never bothered to that look it poor up, lake gets slammed yeah it gets um, rocked man yeah right? it's a it's they a need, pretty, need pretty high pressure area Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably uh it's probably a good thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I mean eighteen also has its its slot size for walleye too, eh? It's like it's gotta yeah, be but that, within that's like... a zone specific one. Simcoe has lake specific oh, slot. Lake specific. Yeah. Right. And actually, for anybody listening or watching to this, if you're like a nipissing angler if out that way, if I'm not mistaken. There's new regs for nipissing too, in terms of uh, limits and slot sizes for walleye and pike out there as well. Now, um, yeah, I, I think that. I think that those are new this year. Maybe somebody, if you if you're up from that area, can correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. But I'm pretty sure that those regs are new for nipissing as well. But uh, like Adam said earlier when we were talking about bait management zones, the best thing you can do is read the regs yourself. Um, that is the absolute best course of action to uh find all the answers to your questions and if you still get confused yeah, because then when when the officer you, questions you sorry when they when the officer questions you you're not going to be like oh yeah no uh ben and jeff and adam told me that i could do this and then they want our information you could just be like no no i just misunderstood the regs so yeah 
Yeah. Figure it out on your own. <laughs> and also like a conservation officer doesn't care that you misunderstood the regs. Like ignorance is not an excuse for, for breaking the rules when it comes to fishing or the law of any kind, really. But we only care about fishing here. So that's what we're True. talking about. <laughs> but please, yeah, they also don't care for the love of God, you, uh... don't tell a conservation officer that, oh yeah, Ben and Adam and Jeff and I'm uh, doing this podcast and they said this, so that's what I did. So blame them. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Unless you're right, then you can tell them that you learned something from us. Yeah, we'll take the credit for that. That's yeah. right. But if you're you know wrong, I just realized, no thanks, guys, you're on your own. <laughs> I just realized something. I think I know what uh, what Dylan is on to. The elephant in the room. Like, look at these lights. Look at you guys with your plain walls. Jeez. And I just got, like, a Having party a going party on down there. here. So For anybody yeah, who's boring. listening to this in podcast form... <laughs> Adam up there has like a weird disco party going on in the background. It's tripping me out a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, this is actually, this light is normally in my living room and uh, me and my kids, we have dance parties, uh, but I, they don't know yet. We haven't had a dance party since I moved it down here and uh, they don't know I'm using it for this. So I might get in trouble. It's worth it. I like it. Totally worth it. it. Totally worth it. Yeah, I need to do something with this wall back here. Cool. It's pretty bland. Eh? Yeah, you're you're saying it's a wall. Boring. It's a wall. I mean, at least I got like a guitar. I got a flasher back there. I don't have lights. That's that's but good. It's not, it's not right. even a guitarist. It's not even a flasher. It's a it's just digital, not analog. So Ben, you said you had some frostbite baits. What do you got there? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you went through the soft plastics. <laughs> Tell us about some of the hard baits you got. Because I don't have any uh, of those, and I'm super jealous. Well, you got some dinner bells, and I got tons of dinner bells. Oh, I, like, I have a couple of those. Just like well, tons of dinner bells, different different colors, different sizes. Just making um, it rain dinner bells right now. For sure, man. Dinner bell. Dinner like bell, I, dinner I, bell, I stocked up bell. for like two years. So here's the story: I bought dinner bells like two years ago when they were like when they first kind of came out. Super pumped to use them. Benny and I go out ice fishing. It was like our second time on the ice that season. And we left my tackle box on the ice mm. with Ooh. all my new dinner bells and all of my baits. So, yeah, I was a little, little hurt about that. So I didn't buy any dinner bells for a little while after that. That <laughs> so is I kind the of worst. Just went a little crazy. But I also got some tantrums, too. So I'm stoked to use these. Yeah, I'm jealous about the tantrums, that's for bars. sure. Yeah. So. What is that one with the orange head? That's interesting. Yeah, clown color. Look at that. Yeah. Interesting. So, so for any of you who are listening or watching and you don't know what the heck we're talking about, when we're talking about Frostbite, it's a uh, it's a company that was started by a bunch of YouTubers, and I think it's owned Fun. by Alex Perrick, uh, AP Bassing, but AP Bassin, sorry. No, Bassing. Is it Bassing? No, we changed it to Bassing. Alex Perrick. You sh- if, you know, if you watch AP, YouTube, he's the man. you've probably yeah. seen his videos. But anyways... If, if you're a Canadian angler or down in the United States or basically anywhere, you'd have seen a lot of more people like Jay Siemens and Clayton Schick and Mindak Outdoors and all kinds of people that have, uh, you know, are featuring these, uh, these lures. Um, so they've got a big, big team of promo people behind them, but uh, they, they just make great stuff. The lures, the lures are, are awesome. Uh, I have a couple of the micro dinner bells and I, I put out a video pretty recently of uh me last year when I was perch fishing and I caught a lot of perch almost, you know what I think almost exclusively hook. on one gold dinner bell. You know what I think the next hot bait is? It's going to be pit viper glasses. Yes. I saw that. I haven't watched the video that? yet. I haven't watched the video either, but I saw the thumbnail. Just, Justin Jenkins from Assorted Meats Fishing, for those of you who don't know, it, you should check him out. Um, but he just put out a video catching lake trout with, uh, with pit viper sunglasses. This guy he's, does... he's well known for using crazy stuff like a spoon, a tampon, like crazy stuff to catch. Like a sure. literal spoon. Yeah, yeah a literal not spoon. Like, not just, like not yeah. like a jig spoon. Like <laughs> no. a teaspoon. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he's great. Good fun to watch. Yeah, so he lives up a, up in like uh, Nunavut, there near what's it called? Baker's Lake, I think. And that guy does some crazy stuff on the lake. And uh, his, oh, he, yeah. he's got some awesome YouTube videos. I really enjoy his stuff. He too. also fishes in like three feet of ice. Yeah. It's like the amount of ice that he's got to get through is insane. There's more than and that. Like there's more than that a lot of the time. But that's just it. Like imagine, like he's got to bring those fish up 
that hole. Yeah. It's insane. Well, he struggles too sometimes with the Lakers when he's when they're at the bottom of the hole. Like he'll have them there for a yeah. while, just trying to get their head to go the right way. That's like, it, right? I saw a in a video that he put out last year. That, enough ice. I saw in a video that he was putting out last year that he had go like ahead, Jeff. he had like two or three auger extensions on his auger. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it was like taller than him. It was taller than him. Yeah. <laughs> Just wild. wild. That's wild. That's what I said. Did we say that's wild? Did we all just say that's wild that's all at the same wild. time? We all said that's wild. I think that's wild. wild. It's cute, actually. Nice uh, work, guys. I feel like we're getting to know each other so much better through this podcast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've spent more time video chatting with you guys than I have with my wife in the last week. <laughs> wow. I feel special. Does that Sorry. mean I'm getting a Christmas present, too? You're not. Oh, sorry. No, no, I already told you. Well, no, I told you not to get me one, which is code for I'm not getting you one. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> what <Yeah>. about me? <laughs> oh, we didn't think we had to. Just say that. Even, I'm just uh, not even part of the equation uh, here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe next year. We've this only, we've only bring really us... met once, Jeff. So. I know, that's true. Um, Tunis wants to know how we all know each other. Actually, through um, YouTube. Well, through YouTube, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we all met through YouTube. Pretty much. You guys met before, like, Ben, you met Jeff before you and I met, correct, or no? I don't, I don't know if that's correct, but I know that Ben and I yeah. met through YouTube. For sure. I don't know, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know when we started talking. Actually. Probably the beginning of 2019, or like late 2018, I want to say. The beginning of 2019, yeah. I was away for work for sometime so i don't remember if that mm-hmm. was before i got back or before i left that you and i talked for the first time yeah i'm not sure i forget i can't even remember the first time we went fishing was <laughs> Jeez, it the opener no that wasn't the first time couldn't have been no because we, we oh my gosh oh, when was you it you got us thinking tunis <laughs> But Adam and I just started talking through Instagram. Like, we knew each other. I, I found Adam's videos. I watched one of his videos, and he didn't catch a fish throughout the whole thing. And I'm like, why did I just sit and watch this entire video? And the dude didn't even catch a fish. He's just sitting, and it's just a chess cam the entire time. Just a chess yeah. cam of him casting and, and just his banter. And I was like, why did I stick around through that? So I left him a comment, and then, yeah, we just started chatting. Yeah, and I watched your crappy video, even though it sucked. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? I don't that's know. not actually what you said, but we also connected because meant. we were metalheads too. So I don't we think we connected through metal. YouTube. I think we connected through Front Neck Outfitters. Do you think so? Yeah. And then through that, it was it went from there to YouTube, and then we started well, I mean, fishing together. I mean, you only got in with Front Neck Outfitters because of YouTube, and I only got in with Front Neck Outfitters because of YouTube. So kind of was still because of YouTube, but maybe semantics, right? Whatever. But yeah, semantics. Yeah. Is that the yeah. right name for that? Anyways, close enough. Well, let, but I think that's it. Yeah, research, I think that's ben, the story. YouTube. That was a that was an interesting trip down memory lane there for us. For sure. Thanks, Tunis. <laughs> and uh, looks like we're meeting more friends too. You know, through YouTube, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, we're gonna go. Yeah. Like gonna go fish with Tackle Box here. Tony out on Sim- Simcoe. We're gonna go fish with Tunis up in the Ottawa Valley. Tony's going to put us on some giant whiteies. No yeah. pressure, Tony, but... <laughs> um, Not quite. I, uh, <laughs> Sorry, just to tune this. I, I should probably specify yeah. before I just say an answer randomly. <laughs> Send it. So, Tunis is just asking whether or not Jeff and I both work for Front Neck Outfitters. And technically, we both don't work for Front Neck Outfitters. Um, so, Front Neck Outfitters are my client, and I have my own business, and... That's kind of that relationship. That's kind of how that works. And then Jeff is a pro staff member of Front Neck Outfitters. So he's a representative for Front Neck Outfitters. And in case so any of like you don't employed, know the difference, but... like what pro staff means, it's not professional staff. Pro staff, when it comes to that kind of relationship, stands for promotional staff. And a lot of people <laughs> are like, oh man, I'm pro staff. I'm a, I'm a pro, 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 pro. But that's, you're a promo staff, really. So that's what I yeah. am. I'm not a I'm not a professional angler. You just leave that extra O out so you feel a little bit cooler. That's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's a great relationship. 
And uh, I, I love working with front neck outfitters. They're just an amazing group of people. And they oh, have sure. some wicked gear up there too. So yeah. 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 Solid group. They run a good program for sure. Yeah, yeah, they sure do. Lots of different things that they do. Kayaks, canoes, they got hot tents. Yeah. If any of well, you live, in, live in Ontario, you should uh, head up to the front neck outfitters website and, and sign up for their mailing list. Cause they got some wicked sales that are going on daily right now until Friday. Just saying. Thanks. Plug, Actually, plug, plug, plug. I'll, uh, I'll put a, I'll put a link in the description to the mailing list. See if I can edit it, edit it in right now. You could do it. Oh, do you guys have any baits that you're excited about this year? You excited to dip in the water, get wet? I don't have, I don't have any new baits. I do have some baits from last year that I have never used. Oh, okay. does that count? <laughs> yeah, so that's a that's a good discussion. That's a discussion on its own. Baits you've never used but sit in your tackle box. Yep. Start. That's, I have a lot of those. Name one. Name one. Oh man, you know what one is? I have a Lindy uh what's it called? The Lindy flutter spoon or something flying, like that. The flying rattler? Yeah, something like that. And it's it's so cool. It's a, such a cool looking bait. It looks like it's going to work so well, and I've never mm -hmm. used it. Not once. I've dipped I've dipped that lure so many times and I haven't had luck with it yet. No. But it's too bad. I th if it's the same one, I think it is. The flying rattling spoon or something. Yeah. But what about you, Adam? Uh I got a bunch. I would say probably I would love to pull a big old Laker through the ice on paddle tail. Oh, that would that's, be cool. That's what I'd like to do. Yeah. I put the yeah. uh, I put the link to that uh, mailing list into the description, and I uh, just sent it in chat too. So if any of you guys are canoe or kayak anglers and in you Ontario, you should join that list because there's some. I got a hot tip that Friday is going to be a good one. I'm trying to remember what a vibrato is. I've seen Ooh. them before. Tunis mentioned the vibrato lure. The vibrato bait. What are they? I would look we talked. I, we talked about this before. We talked yeah. about it. Yeah, it's a blade. It's you like a blade bait. Too. Yeah, but they're like long blade baits. Yeah, and meeks. Right. And meeks. they have a, a treble hook on each end. Okay. Yeah, I don't the have any meeks. Between, between but, uh, like a, a standard blade bait and the vibrato, though, is the vibrato uh, you you tie on to the middle of it, as opposed to like the front, like third of it. With the uh, blade baits, it's it's a vertical jigging presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and blade baits usually have a like a bit of a lead weight up in the front somewhere too, right? The vibrato mm -hmm. doesn't. It's just like a it's like a horizontal spoon as opposed to a vertical spoon kind of deal. Yeah, not exactly, but that's like the gist of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would <laughs> I would like to bring something up if unless you guys have something else you'd like to bring up. Yeah, I just wanted to say that Meigs are. Uh, Tackle box, Tony, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Meeks are made locally here in Ontario, are they not? Um, something I'd like to bring up while Tackle Box is answering us. Um, if you guys are enjoying this, hit that like button just to help us out. It promotes the live stream. It would, yeah, it'd be greatly appreciated. Smash that like button. Uh, I'll hit it. And I'll also, hit it. This, this is, is good. This is being hosted on Discord this. right now. And you guys may not know what Discord is, but if you have the time to look into it and you're interested in joining in uh, with some of our chats, um, Discord is essentially a server where we have different text chats going on, but then there's also rooms like this where we can jump in and have voice chats and video chats and whatever. Um, so we'll have a link to that in the description too. But That's all true. There is yeah. a link to the Discord server in the description of this video cool. on YouTube. It will expire in seven days, but if you need another one, you can just DM us. We'll get it to you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and usually after we're done our live streams here with the Fish on podcast, we'll go to one of the public channels and just uh, chit chat and, and horse around in there for a little bit before we all go to bed. So if you want to yeah, hang out with us and, and join the after party, you can join up on Discord and come have a chat. We with say us. all kinds of things after the show that we can't say on the show. The after party is not here, PG. I'll yeah, this not PG. light. It. This is what this light is all about. It's the after party. 
I'm just getting yeah, that, everyone that curtain up. drops and the dancers mm. are all lined up. Yeah. And yeah, the DJ's there. Got ready a, to go. He's just waiting. Got a bunch of, got a bunch of um, attractive people, men and women behind me, <laughs> just waiting to put on a show. <laughs> it's you guys. It's you guys. You're it's, right behind me. It's not me. For sure. I just got to go through that door yeah. that's right there. And it's actually going to go into your room. That's right. I just want to yeah. go on record and say that I will not be removing any articles of clothing for anybody on live video chat. You didn't say naked dancers. We just said dancers, Jeff. Where's your head going, man? You just want to start taking off your clothes. I That's just want to go on record saying that I will take off articles of clothing. Boy, this spun down a uh, rabbit if, hole fast. I just want to go on the record and say that I don't want to see Adam well, take just off any articles of clothing. <laughs> How's my internet connection right now, guys? Am I, am I moving? It's a bit you blurry, good. but you're good. You're blurry, but... Uh, but further it's to what just, we were talking uh, about with the Meigs... So miserable. Yes. Tacklebox Tony confirms. Meigs are made locally in Ontario, uh, in Barrie, as he mentioned. Um, they're pretty cool oh. lures. I don't have any of those. I have the very similar style of fishing lures, uh, the Blue Fox. I've got a couple of those. That's what I use. But I want to I wanna buy some Meigs. I pick the up a Blue couple. Blue Fox, eh? Does yeah, that have another name for it? Because there's Blue Fox spinners too, right? Yeah, that's right. The Blue Fox... Uh, the Blue some... Fox is the brand. Yeah. Yeah, right. So I have okay. the I have a couple of the little foxies. Oh, is that what they're called? Little yeah. foxies. Foxy. Yeah. Okay. I've never caught anything with them. <laughs> I've tried them a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like my, so, man, uh, my go-to bait is just a small jig head with some kind of either like a like a Berkeley gulp waxy or like a tiny little plastic on it, something like that, or even just. <laughs> Just bear, you know, if you can get an, a little tungsten or a lead jig head, it's a real tiny one that has like a, a bit of a skirt on it, like a little bit of just feathers or something tied to it. That's all you need. Um, that's my go-to. That's my confidence. It's just, a little, just a tiny jig. Cool stuff. Yeah, it's kind of funny, actually, because uh, ice fishing is the only time that I use live bait. I don't use live bait ever in the summer. But yeah, in the same. winter, I just feel like I'm so horrible at it, and it's it, it has proven to be pretty tough for me. So I give myself that advantage, and and usually will use live bait. And I normally will keep fish more in the winter than I do in the summer. I think that probably applies for a lot of people. So I'm not so worried about using live bait because if they swallow it, I'm I'm going to swallow them. So. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, fish. I, I don't, uh, if I'm out mm -hmm. of my kayak, I, I generally don't take fish home uh, just because of logistically, it's a bit, it's a bit of a pain in the butt to deal with stringers. If I'm in my boat, I'll, I'll throw some fish in my live well, depending on what it is. Uh, and, and ice fishing like you, ice fishing is when I harvest the most fish of the year. Like when I, when I take fish home, it's mostly during ice fishing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about keeping them fresh. You just throw them on the ice and yep. dispatch them first, of course. Uh, okay, that's it. Hot take. I don't like the people who just toss their fish on the ice and let them suffocate. I can't. That bothers me. I don't know why. Just bonk the thing on the head, put it out as misery, done and over with. So there's, there's, actually, no there's actually a better Anyways, way to, just have to, way get to it do off, it. Man. And I don't know if it's less or more humane, but uh, if you're harvesting you fish, head off. you bite the head No, don't bite the head off. Uh, if you're harvesting your <laughs> fish, work. the best yeah. thing you can do is bleed them out. I mean, I don't, it, it will dispatch them faster than if you were to just let them freeze or suffocate on the ice. But what it does is make the meat better. It makes the meat more white, depending on what kind of fish you're harvesting. Of course, the salmon won't be like that, probably. I don't know. I don't harvest salmon. Okay, so we'll talk about walleye. If I'm bringing a walleye home, I'm going to bleed it out on the ice because it makes the meat is that more white. It makes it more firm. Uh, because when you bleed them, it helps to pump all that blood out of the meat so that it doesn't stay in the meat and uh, the meat lasts for longer. It doesn't taste as fishy when you cook it. And uh, it's just overall better to bleed your fish out. Is so that how you dispatch them? That's how I dispatch them. Because if you dispatch them and then bleed them, then they don't bleed as much. Their no, if you bonk them on the head, their heart keeps pumping. You've just essentially rendered them like brain dead. The heart will continue to pump for at least a couple minutes. Yeah. Maybe that's a better way to do it. A more humane. Let's do both. 
I want to try the Ikejime um, method. I don't know if you guys have ever heard about that. Yeah, that sounds intense. Yeah. I don't know it if it's like I don't know if it's worth it for wrong. like lake fish though. You know what I mean? Maybe if you're harvesting some like crazy ocean fish and you're about to make sashimi out of it or something like that, that might be mm -hmm. the best way. I don't know if it's worth it for like a walleye. I don't know. I've heard that it's oh for the yeah that the that yeah. kind of dispatch method. Yeah. So for any of you yeah. who don't know what the ikejime ikejime method is. It's it's a way of dispatching a fish in the absolute most humane way possible. And I think it starts with you take a spike and you basically hammer it into their brain. That's the first thing you do. So it makes them brain dead. They don't mm. they feel you no pain. Too. They feel no pain. They feel no fear. There's no there's no anything. They're just brain dead. And then um like you there's some stuff you have to do at the back of the fish. Like it's it's crazy. You have to like destroy the spinal cord, like you have to cut the back, and then you have this rod that you insert into their spinal cord. It's it's crazy, but they don't feel it a thing because like, they're already brain dead. It sounds like you're it, it sounds like you're mutilating, like just torturing this fish, but they're brain dead, so they feel nothing. It sounds like you're prepping them to be a mummy or something. Yeah, like, it's it's know, wild. Like ancient Egypt, and you're like, yeah, taking their brain out through their nose and stuff. Like I don't know the exact method, so I could be a little bit off the wall here, but that's what I remember. I remember watching a YouTube video. I think about what it, you're like, supposed to do actually. Once you once you puncture the skull and you stir up the brain, you gotta strip it out. I, yeah, I, I don't think you're right. To, and there and goes my you, wife. And then you bite the head off. <laughs> yeah. Don't bite the head <laughs> off. Your fish. <laughs> Who was it that did that? Oh, I man. saw that in a video somewhere. Bit the head off a fish. Yeah, I saw that too. It was like a perch or one something rod, like that. One rod's done it. Maybe it's one. One rod. rod did it. I don't watch a lot of his stuff. Not because I don't like it. I think I just it was a long time ago. Watch it. Mm -hmm. This was a long time ago. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to bring up some uh, something that is near and dear to my heart. It's something we talked about recently. And uh, and I just want to bring it up quickly before, uh, before we wrap it up. Um, so I was on Simcoe. This was a couple of years ago. And we were like three kilometers offshore. Like we walked way out. There was no one else around, and I had to go poop. I had to go poop. And I was like, I'm not going to make it back to shore. There's no way. I didn't prepare for this. I, so I was faced with this dilemma. What do I do? And maybe I won't go into the exact details, but I'll talk about some of the solutions that we came up with. Um, I think this year I might... Because I almost always bring a five gallon bucket with me and I just throw a bunch of gear in it and I use that to like hop around the holes. So I might bring like a heavy duty, like maybe even a couple of heavy duty bags that I could use to line the bucket. And Jeff, you came up with the solution of the uh, the pool noodle to make it nice and comfy. Um, but that seems like uh, probably the most appropriate way to dispose of your matter um and uh you know unless unless you're you just tell your buddies to leave the tent for a couple of minutes open up the windows and do your thing and let it air out and then they can come back in and everyone just go back to normal like nothing happened <laughs> most most uh fishing shacks pop-ups depending on whatever one you have nowadays have uh, vents for the carbon monoxide that are emitted from generally most heaters so you just make sure you got the vents open. You're not going to Dutch oven yourself, I guess. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to point out that I didn't come up with the pool noodle idea. It's just a method that I know about. I don't know who made it up, but if you learn I something advise, from that. Uh, you suggest I would advise it. instead of bringing, instead of bringing TP, you bring wet wipes. But keep well, them on your body so they don't freeze. You need both. Okay. So Yeah, that would okay. be a problem. Yeah. Some some of you may or may not know I, that, I agree I'm in that. The, I'm in the military. So what we always make sure whenever we go to the field that we have wet wipes, there's always TP out there, but we, you have to bring your own wet wipes. And the wet wipes are great because you start with the TP, you get the bulk of the mess off, and then the wet wipe is the finisher. Yeah. That's the way it goes. You get, you get the ones with like the vitamin E and the lotion. Just I to, think we brought this is the fish on solid. podcast where we talk about poop. 
I think we brought some yep. solid, solid value there. Not running value. But no, some you know what? Solid value. Adam brings up a valid point. Um, fortunately, I've never come across human excrement on the ice. Uh, I have. And, uh, but it would be gross. And I would be really, really mad if I were to like take my wife and, and my young daughter out on the ice and she like stepped in somebody's crap, you know? So take care of your business. Uh, don't leave your stuff on the ice. Um, cat, san cat, cat sanitation on a lake is, is just not good. I mean, I'm not a scientist or like a, a, like an ecological biologist. I don't think that one or two people's waste is going to affect the marine ecosystem of the lake, but that doesn't mean that you should do it. I mean, it's, it can't be good for the water. It just can't be, you know, especially if more and more people are doing it, especially considering, you know, the amount of other stuff that gets pumped into some of our freshwater lakes, which is just an absolute shame. But you know, the less stuff that we can keep out of the lakes, the better. Um, for sure. I got one more pro tip. Yeah. Burn your TP. You don't have to pack it out. Just burn it on the ice. Boy, that would smell so Isn't bad. Isn't it illegal to have fires on the ice? I think it Isn't is that in illegal? Ontario. I in Ontario, I think it's illegal. Look it up because I thought that, and I, I mentioned that to people before. They're like, "No, nah, that's not true," and then they couldn't find that. Well, that, and then that'll I be a question that we'll answer in maybe the next episode. <gasps> that'll be our take. Oh, somebody knows right now, and they can let us know in the cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, or or if you know for a fact, you can let us know in the chat. That's work. That works too. The moral of the story is. <laughs> Don't leave anything on the ice that you took out there. If you take That's everything, right. don't leave any trash on the ice. It's gross, man. I, I hate, I hate going ice fishing and I see like beer cans and cigarette butts and like empty yeah. worm containers and just general garbage, like people's like Mr. Noodle containers and stuff like that, just like left on the ice. It's awful. And it drives me crazy. For sure. Don't leave Full your trash disclosure. on the ice. Full disclosure, I used to smoke, but I never would leave my butts in the water or on the ice. I would Don't always do put them in my pocket. Just Don't do it. Yeah, it's horrible. Full disclosure, Ben is trash on the ice. <laughs> Everything you take on the ice Ouch. with you, take off the ice when you leave. Don't, don't leave <laughs> your garbage me, on the ice. Especially because I'm trash, apparently. Yeah. Maybe we can fit you in one of those heavy-duty bags that Adam's going to bring out onto, the, onto the, out onto the ice. As long as it's not the same After one that I've uh, used. No, 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 no. Yeah, Ooh. no. Let's end this podcast now. <laughs> yeah, we're going down a dark road. So further yeah. to uh, what Ben was saying, we'll we'll have our little after party in the fishbowl on our Discord server. If you want to join us there and, and have some some non PG whatever we're doing little chat, then uh, you're welcome to join us, and we'd be happy to see you there. I want to thank you all for watching, or if you're listening to this in your car, getting ready for your uh, your next fishing trip. Thanks for tuning in. Any closing remarks from you, uh, Adam or Ben? Thanks for clicking on the link. Yeah, and Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Yes. We'll see that, you guys next That's year. right. That's a good point. This will be the last Fish on Podcast of 2021, and uh, we'll resume in the new year. We've got, some, we've got at least one guest lined up for the first episode, and we're really excited to have him on. For but, sure. Uh, oh, hey, Blue Rock Charters. Blue Rock <laughs> Charters. Last shout out cool. for Blue Rock Charters, fishing guide in the Kingston area. Catch us some big, big walleye out on the Bay of Quinney. Oh, yeah. So if you're for up, sure. if you find yourself up this way, ice fishing or open water fishing, look up Captain Joe Spence of Blue Rock Charters. That's cool. it. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks for coming, everyone. See us.